Being one of Asia's major archaeological sites, Sikiria is a unique combination of the 5th century urban planning, architecture, engineering, hydraulics, garden landscape, painting, sculpture and poetry. It is a combination of natural beauty of the surrounding and technology developed by the 5th century master builders. The history of the site itself goes back to the pre- and proto-historic times. Rock strewed western and northern slopes around the base of the rock were the location of a Buddhist rock shelter monastery from the 3rd century BC. Starting from its proto-historic origins, the Sigiri region was to become one of the major centers of iron production in Sri Lanka in the early historic period, especially between the 1st and the 4th centuries AD. King Kashyapa and his master builders gave the site its present name Simhagiri or Lion Mountain and were responsible for most of the structures and the complex plan that we see today. Recent archaeological studies have surfaced a vast amount of information regarding the Sigiriya, important in both cultural and technological spheres. Water management system operated in Sigiriya complex is one such finding which shows the competency of our ancestors in blending technology with the natural settings. Scholars who studied this system have segregated the Sigiriya complex into different zones like Palace Complex at Rock Summit, Water Garden No. 3, Water Garden No. 2, Water Garden No. 1, Beniacha Water Garden and the Inner Moat. Apart from these, Sigiriya Vava also plays a vital role in water management system Sigiriya complex as a main feeding source. When designing a water management system in dry zone, the major problem encountered is the availability of water in adequate quantities. To overcome this problem and to collect rainwater as much as possible, many water retaining ponds have been constructed in the Sigiri complex starting from the rock summit up to inner mode. These are three ponds available at the rock summit. The largest being 27 meters in length and 22 meters in width is situated at the middle of the summit. This covers a total area of 594 square meters. The other two ponds are smaller and situated at the northern and the southern ends of the summit. Drinking water requirements of the occupants of the palace as well as its surrounding gardens are considered to be fulfilled by these ponds. Apart from collecting the rainwater in these ponds, the surface runoff has been directed to a ridge and then conveyed to terrace garden below. When water is flowing from high elevation to a lower elevation, the kinetic energy of the flow depends on the slope of the surface. High the kinetic energy, high the amount of soil particles traveling along with the flow and this increases the soil erosion. This problem has been tackled by constructing boulders to decrease the elevation and further by making these boulders perpendicular to surface water flow. Surface water flowing from terrace garden is directed towards some ponds situated at the edge of the boulder garden. One pond is of particular importance due to its harmonious blend of natural setting with human involvement. This is situated adjacent to a rock which forms two sides of the pond. Other six sides were made out of stone walls making the total eight sides and the pond is referred to as the octangle pond. Rectangular shaped ponds lying in both sides of the approach path belongs to this zone. These ponds also fed from the Sigiriya Vava and the water had thus formed enabled the well-known springs of Sigiriya to operate. The edges of these ponds are brick worked generally in three levels. The bottom level is for water retention and the next level was to minimize the erosion banks during the overflow. The third level is to avoid the destructions due to human activities like walking. There are four large ponds at the center of this garden area. Apart from adding the aesthetic beauty to the landscape, these ponds may have functioned as the bathing pools also. Flights of steps and series of surrounding terraces gave easy access to the water. 
The Sigiriya Vava would have supplied the pools with required clean water through an underground conduit, ensuring uniform and uncontaminated water supply even during dry seasons. These four ponds were interconnected at their base. This created a single hydraulic system with uniform water level in all four pools. Just inside the western entrance is a garden very different in character from those described above. This garden is consisting of shallow reflecting pools requiring relatively small volume of water. The intention is to form an aesthetic wave appearing even during the dry seasons. Flow of these ponds were made of pebble or polished marbles. These would have probably served as a cooling device but at the same time should have great aesthetic appeal creating interesting visual effects. The excess rain water runoff and the final outflow from the miniature water garden is passed into the main discharge conduit from the upper water garden area. The inner moat act as the final discharge sump of all water systems so far discussed. The conduits conveying this discharge enter the moat at an intermediate point in its inner embankment below the surface of the water. This method controls the water flow velocity into the moat, thus protecting the embankment from erosion. <laughs>